So hello everyone, Andrew here from the Indie Interview, bringing you another interview from an inspiring indie. And today I'm talking to Mary Humphrey and we're going to be talking about photography. Sit back, grab something to take some notes and get ready to listen because this is going to be an interesting discussion. I feel it coming. Mary, photography and in later life, how did you get to it? Well, first of all, Andrew, thank you so much for inviting me to um, to give me this opportunity to talk about my favourite subject, photography and me. Um, so how did I get into it? Well, basically, I am a teacher. Yeah. I'm one of those teach. I'm one of those people who, from the age of fourteen, has always wanted to be a teacher, mm -hmm. and consequently, I've had an amazing career in um, in education and mm -hmm. in teaching. So how did I get into photography? Well, um, um, I taught in Cambridge. Um, at a particular school, am I allowed to mention the school? I, it's up to you. I, I, so I, at a school, at a school. So I taught at a school for 16 years where I headed, um, ended up being um, head of the lower school and, um, and pre-prep. And then my husband was offered um, a very good job in America. Now, up to now, I had... Um, always stressed my wishes that we stayed in the same place so that the boys, mm -hmm. we have three sons, actually went to the same school and, um, and uh, um, established relationships mm -hmm. with friends that would be lifelong. Now, um, the, the, the reason for this was that both my husband and I were forces children and we went to yeah. 13 schools. Oh my goodness. Consequence. Um, I was very keen that the boys should have um, friendship roots. Mm -hmm. So when the boys had gone off to university and had started establishing their careers, um, I said to my husband, now it's your turn. And, and we ended up going to San Francisco, where, um, where uh, my husband um, worked in a startup company. Mm -hmm. And, and this was an amazing job for him. But for me, I had left everything at home. I'd left my children, I'd left my background, I'd left my identity. Mm. Um, but having said that, whilst I was in the States, I actually found my other identity, my true identity. I stopped being Mrs. Humphrey's um, teacher. I stopped being Mrs. Humphrey's head. I stopped being somebody's grandmother. And I stopped being Dr. Humphrey's wife. I, I actually became Mary Humphrey because I had no, no history behind me. It was up to me to, to, um, to talk to people and to find out from people and to take opportunities. Now, um, the, so photography. So I started taking photographs in San Francisco in order to bring back photographs now, this is the time before the onslaught of digital photography. And so everything I did was film. And I used to um, come back to England three or four times a year to see the boys. And I would show them photographs because for the first time in their lives, whatever I was experiencing, it was out of their experience. Because up to now, I knew their friends, they knew my friends. Mm -hmm. And so in order for them to understand and to, to, to actually connect with what we were doing in the state, I used to take loads of photographs. So from there, I decided I actually want to learn more about photography. And I was advised to continue with film as opposed to going on to digital. So I started classes at San Mateo College, a community college, which, um, which they, um, you, you gain credits each semester. Yeah. And it was there that I learned, and I loved the, uh, um, uh, being in the dark room. Mm -hmm. And I learned as much as I could to the extent that I became an honor student and was offered several scholarships mm -hmm. in the States. But during this time, um, uh, we, we were then returning back after six years. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, 
you know, I wasn't in the situation to take up these scholarships. However, I wanted to continue learning the craft of being in the dark room. I wanted to continue, um, I wanted to continue um, to be independent in the dark room. Up to, up to this point, I was very dependent on, on my, my tutor, um, who was an amazing photographer, um, Lyle Gomes. And, and I was high maintenance, I, I, you know, looking back, I was really high maintenance. I wanted to learn, I wanted to know, but I wanted to continue when I came back to, the, um, back to England. And in Cambridge, I, I asked around, asked around, and all the dark rooms had ceased to exist, apart from the universities, and I couldn't access the universities um, dark room, but, um, but I accessed um, a higher school's dark room, but I wanted to continue learning. And the only way I could do this was actually doing a BA at the Cambridge School of Art. Now that was um, an enormous, an enormous challenge, not only from the academic point of view and the fact that I hadn't been in, in a um, school environment for many, many years, but also I was 40 years older than the most of the students. Dare I ask what sort of age you were at that time? 60, 60, 65, six, no, I got my second year. So I was 65 yeah. um, in my second year. Right. All right, so, and I, I was 66 when I got my BA, or 65, I don't know, I, I'm yeah. speaking as. And, um, and, and then I, so, I was very, very lucky because um, I, I was in a superb, um, superb department under Kirsten Hacker at the Cambridge School of Art. And I was challenged. I was challenged. They saw my, um, my potential and they pushed me. And, um, and so the type of photography I, I did and I still do and I, I enjoy, um, I was advised to think about my own experiences as a teacher and and one of the things that I, I actually like doing and again it's the experience of going to 13 schools I, I, I actually like talking to people I'm not frightened to talk to people so I thought I would I would I would choose photography that enabled me to establish relationships with people and then I thought well how about giving a voice to people who are on the outskirts mm -hmm. of our settled communities, which this was a, an enormous task. And I started off photographing gypsies and travelers, mm -hmm. which was a huge, huge oh. challenge. But by going out, talking to them constantly without my camera, then with my camera and going back again with the photographs and showing them what I was doing, my, my sketchbooks, my context books, because it was out of their experience, especially the ladies, yeah. because I was a middle-aged, middle-class woman going back to school. And so I, I spent a lot of time doing this and it paid off. And, and I, um, so I, I then, um, so my next project, was um, the person beneath, and this was, and this, um, and this was about ladies beneath the hijab. Again, I was trying to expose, expose those who are seen to be invisible, and my attitude here was to photograph them in diff at different angles mm -hmm. to encourage the, um, to encourage the viewer to look and look and look again, so that the next time they see a lady in a hijab, they will ask questions. I wonder what she's like. I wonder how many children she's got. I wonder what she does. And, th and, that, and, and that has been the ethos of my photography. I like to show the story within the frame, but I also then want people to look and then ask questions out of the frame so that they go and explore and to find out more about that particular subject or the particular person. So, um, so that was it. Oh, I sorry. So actually, um, I then went on to do an MA and um, I, I then um, just 
decided to actually, I don't know anything about transgender. Now, I'm talking about these projects when I took them on. Um, so I'm talking about 2012, where it wasn't, it wasn't, um, they weren't high profile. No. Now, more information about all these different um, pro um, projects that I have covered. But, but when I started, they were very much under the carpet. And, and it was the same with transgender. Now, I, I learned a lot, as with all the other projects, a huge amount about transgender. My attitude initially was to go in and talk to people and, and you know, and maybe doing a photo, a photo diary of somebody's um, trans. I didn't. I realized that every single story that I came across was individual. Mm -hmm. Every single story was different, but there was a unique thread going through all of the stories. I actually, so it's the same with um, the person beneath and transgender. I interviewed people mm -hmm. and, um, I, I, and, I, and I, I um, placed these, all, all my photographs I have, mm -hmm. have self-published into, um, in, into blurb albums. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, like, I, I like albums um, as opposed to works just staying on the computer. And, um, and, and yes, I, I, I and, and by, by me learning a lot and talking to other people about what I've learned, this has actually encouraged people to open up their, um, to open up, um, oh, not, not their mind, but their intellect and, and, yeah. and find out a little bit more about different people. Um, and, um, uh, yes, it, it, I, I mean, um, and and I used to um, bring bring um, people home, photograph them at home. I would photograph them in their house. I would travel miles to go and visit them in their house. And and, and it's, but I must make the point that people were very 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 generous. Yes. When they knew me, they were very generous. In, in what they said to me, in how they allowed me to photograph them. It, it, it sounds to me you've been breaking many, many sort of limitations, boundaries. Yes. Um, as a, 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 an older woman, you, you broke the boundary of retraining education at a time when that probably wasn't seen to be where you should be going, you should be retiring. Um, you broke the boundaries of going into different communities and building relationships with people who you wouldn't normally get to. You broke the boundaries of using film when everyone was using um, digital. And you also um, broke the boundaries of, of traveling abroad to different countries in, in your 60s and, and now beyond, I guess. Yes. Well, I continued. Now I had to, when I left university, yeah. I realized, so I was there for six years and I came away with um, a first class honors and um, a distinction in my MA. And so I realized that I had another learning curve to mm -hmm. go through before I could carry on. And that was to learn digital photography. Right. Now I, um, now this, I was always very reticent while I was at uni to actually, um, we had a module, I hated it. I felt as though I was on a motorway and not understanding the gears on the car. And, but, but when I knew I had to apply it because of the type of photography that I was going to do, because I subsequently, I have um, photographed at conferences mm -hmm. and I photographed people and it's all, it's been, and it's not, it, it's been people, um, I, I, I haven't, ha I haven't had the luxury of posing people mm. and uh, enable them. Um, I wanted to tell stories, but it had to be done quickly. Yes. So therefore digital was the, was the perfect medium for that. Yeah. I'm still learning. I'm still, um, um, I, I belong to the Cambridge Camera Club and they have been unbelievable in how they have tutored me and the experiences and the work that I've seen the, the, from the technical side, the encouragement that I've had. And so wh what do I do now? Well, um, whenever there's an opportunity, 
I, I ask people. Um, I photograph at the conferences at the Gypsy Law Society, the annual international conferences. I self-fund this, but, but as uh, in exchange, the organizers always um, introduce me to Roma communities in their countries. So consequently, I photographed Romas in Moldova, Transylvania, Istanbul, Bratislava, and, um, and Cyprus. And, um, and then, and, uh, and, and the more I do it, the more that people see and they say, oh, Mary, I've got this that might interest you. I did a very, very, very lovely project for my final MA, and that was called Those, Those Who Care. And I went to um, Bangladesh and saw lovely, lovely people. And I, meant, and I went to various homes and schools and saw the wonderful charity work that was going on in Bangladesh. But then I realized that nobody photographs those who look after the people in the homes, in the schools, you know, in, at the charities. So my final project for my MA was called Those Who Care. And, and through the Roman Catholic Church, I, I contact, contact, contact people who gave me names. I contact people who gave me more names. And I photographed Those Who Care in Cambodia. And here I... And, and here was a classic case of I had to prove myself to prove my integrity as a photographer and as a person. And I started off with a skeleton. Um, oh, what's the word? Um, when. Oh, I've forgotten the word. Sorry. Yeah. When you have a plan to go somewhere. Yes. Um, oh, I've forgot. Um, anyhow. Plan, plan is good enough. The yeah. Skeleton plan plan where I was going to touch on various schools but there again when I started taking phot photographies now this was done both with film because I wanted to carry on with film for my MA but also with digital so I took both and um, and this was a case in point where people saw me and said Mary this might interest you and we were there for 10 days and those 10 days I photographed from eight o'clock in the morning to very late at night because we went from one, one venue to another venue to another venue. Now here, as I was photographing, um, I couldn't talk to people because I was so involved with my photography. And my husband, um, I was very worried because I thought he was going to get very bored. But what he did, incidentally, was to talk to people. And he asked people the questions because he knew my um, my um um my way of working and what we used to do in the evening that that i would then write out um in the notebook everything that he learned so what i was then able to duplicate this and then insert it in my ma um um project and tell the stories and tell stories absolutely um and so also again what i've done as i've produced books um publications via blurb saying those who care and I went um at, <laughs> I, 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 I went on to a rubbish dump um a rubbish site yeah. and um our guide said Mary do you really want to go and I said yes please so we drove so far to this rubbish site and the tax um, the driver we were with wouldn't go any further and the um and the guide wouldn't go any further, but I carried on. I went straight in, into the in, onto the site, and there people live. That's their job, mm. and I learned I learned this. And when people saw me, they looked at me. I mean, I've got this the stranger coming along with a camera, um, and 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 I always 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 got permission from mm. the person I was photographing. This was very important. Um, and and by with a smile and a thumbs up and a pointing at the camera that says everything that you want and if they didn't like it and this has been right through when i photographed in cambridge fire station um, when i photographed in um in india if people didn't want to i just said thank you 
and then went away. And, and I never ever intrude on anybody. And consequently, I have got people photographed who have been relaxed and, and, and have enjoyed being photographed. So let me go back, sorry. Oh, excuse me. Pat, oh. I'm on podcast, I'll ring you later. Bye. Of boots. Bye. Okay. Bye. Sorry. You're no, the, these these things happen. It shows that you know we're having a, a conversation that's not any together. It's real. But I I, I I am fascinated because to me, you know, I could have I could ask you questions about being a photographer. I could ask you questions about being a storyteller. But it, it seems to me you are an explorer. You know, you are a retired teacher who has found a whole new world and you're exploring that world. You're using the medium of photography to tell stories. And I, I, I just wonder, you know, people who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, what would you say to them about being brave and going out there and, and, and finding stuff, I guess? I've thought a lot about this, actually, Andrew. And, and, and I think... I think the biggest thing is don't be frightened to be disappointed because along the way you will um, you along the way you have to be optimistic but along the way you have to realize that you will have knockdowns and you will be disappointed and people won't always um, appreciate exactly what you're doing so I would say to people, if, if you know, if in my situation, if you you know, go and follow a passion. You know, it, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be um, funded by anybody. Um, what you're doing is you're doing it for yourself, and as a consequence, people people appreciate and your enthusiasm and talk to people because if you start talking to people people will actually be um um w will connect with what you're saying and will actually say well by the way i like this yeah. and um and and also from there take up every opportunity although you you, you might have a um a um a knot in your stomach, should I be doing this? Sh you know, is this safe? Um, um, and you, you have to take chances, but don't be frightened. And don't be frightened to pick yourself up when it doesn't go accordingly as you want it. Because what happens is you de develop through these disappointments. Mm -hmm. I, when I started with all my projects, I ended up with something completely different to what I envisaged when I started. And that was because I was governed by circumstances and by people whom I met. Find, find people within your area, you know, and, and, and there's a lot more educational um, opportunities these days. Mm -hmm. and, and especially with the networking, look and do your research and connect with people. People are very generous. People like you to belong to their community. I, I think that's the best I can do, um, Andrew. The other thing is I still teach. I still teach um, darkroom work at a high school and I still teach colour darkroom mm. at um, one semester for the first years in the colour darkroom. So I do dark. So I'm still continuing with my um with my teaching the other thing is people say to me what well, um, don't you wish you went into to photography before teaching but no because all my experiences as a teacher meeting people and i've used all my um uh, everything i've learned through teaching and that's shown in my photography and again i would say to people use use your lifetime experiences and and to head off in a different direction where your lifetime experiences could actually enhance your new passions. And 
it, it almost seems you know it, you, you have so much you're doing but to ask you about photography are there any resources if anyone was interested in going into photography that you would recommend to them yes find find um go to yes find a course to go on because you, you you know and 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 don't be frightened to say i'm a learner um and and people will teach you and find a course um at, at your local university at your local college um look online to see if there are any clubs um and um um and um yes if if, if there are any clubs and or if, if there are any groups um around you um and do your research and don't be frightened to ask and so research go into higher education finding groups it, it's been a, a fascinating discussion today I, I i'm going to go back and i'm going to re-listen to this several times i think because there's so much there's so much inspiration and so much you know knowledge there but is there one last thought you'd like to leave on the podcast you know what one big idea that you might you'd like to share well i would like to, well yes i mean what yes i'll answer that in a minute andrew but my next you know what what would i like to do now i've got several ideas that i would like to do um you know to continue with project and i would like to do exhibitions Mm -hmm. But I would like to be funded and I'd like to do projects which other which which would mean a lot to other people yep. and to put on these exhibitions. So I'm doing now what I have asked you, your your listeners to do. I'm taking this opportunity to, to put out there, you know, that I would like to continue working to con continue doing projects. So one thing that I would say to people, follow your passion if you want to write a book sit down and write your book yep. if you want to make pottery do it talk to people show it to people and um, follow your passion don't be frightened to and if, if people would like to talk to you is that all right is there a website or i'd love people to talk to me they can contact me either on facebook but that is a personal page. So my Facebook page is um, Mary Humphrey Photographer. Mm. There are two Mary Humphrey photographers. Um, one photographs babies. Mine, I'm the other Mary Humphrey. And also my website is www.maryhumphrey.co.uk. And yes, so I, I wish everybody, and if anybody wants to chat to me, I'm, oh, as you can see, I like talking. <laughs> it, 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 this has been a fabulous, this has been one of my favourite interviews I think I've, uh, I've done. Um, I, I've been inspired and hidden away around here somewhere, I, I, I might wave it at the screen. Um, I bought myself a box oh! of good film. Brilliant. Brilliant. Do you want any help? Uh, I'll, I'll come back to you and talk to, talk to you separate separately about that but thank you very much uh mary humphrey this has been a really interesting chat and thank you for spending the time with us thanks for joining us on the indie interview for more information tools or to book one of our team to work with you or your business or if you'd like us to speak at your event or conference visit i'm not done yet .co .uk. if you have any questions or comments please email us at andrew at i'm not done yet .co .uk. Please do follow or like us on Facebook or Instagram.